excited. Mm. I really, I, I like the Wolverine MTW. Yeah. That's yep. the thing I'm most excited for. And I would be more excited for the Polar Star version. Uh, I think they're calling it the PR15 Pro. Yeah. But we, like, I had to dig to find half the fucking information on it, and we still don't have a confirmed price. I guess that this all leads into our one of our topics yeah. that you actually gave us. Um, the, 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 I guess the Wolverine versus uh, Polar Star and, and their marketing strategies and just why it, it seemed like, Polar Star was just not there to to win it. They did not want to reach out to anybody as, compared to like Wolverine and Wolverine. You know, they had the people, they had the promos, they had everything. They hyped it up, and we loved every fucking bit of it. But Polar Star just wasn't there. They, I feel like they came up short. Yeah, it it was weird to watch because, and, and I had this discussion uh, in like our uh, Facebook discussion group and with some of my friends, and it just seemed odd that. Wolverine came out with the MTW, and uh, it, and I was really watching that and saying, oh my god, I already know everything I need to know about this product within like the day they announced it. They had promo videos ready to roll. Absolutely. They were yeah. already live streaming with the product multiple times throughout the course of the show, answering people's questions, really communicating very effectively what this product is, what makes it special, and why you should buy it. Whereas Polar Star, and I, here's the thing, I'm going to make this point uh, to give a little bit about my background. My day job does involve marketing, and I did go to school for this a little bit, and it does kind of blow my fucking mind that and this is not meant to be any disrespect to Polar Star. I think they're a great company that has a lot of great products, but it felt like they were kind of unprepared for their announcement. I had to dig to find any real fucking information on it. And then when I wanted to know specific things, specific features that Wolverine knew people would be really interested in, like the working bolt catch mechanic or yep. electric technically, I had to ask on Polar Star's Facebook page and wait like four hours before they told me. Mm. I think that it just seemed kind of odd that they didn't market it harder. I think that one thing I noticed was that um, I think that the technology for like HPA, because I've been using like HPA for probably like three years. I've been going from like Polar Star to Wolverine right now. That's in my um, at P90 Asma, and I just feel like that the technology is now moving closer towards just single moving part, like a solenoid. Kind of like like a drop in, rather than having to yeah. buy the whole engine because you know it's gonna be more expensive, more metal pieces, and the at least what I think. I mean, maybe I'm wrong or something, but I think that Wolverine was the one that kind of like came up with it. Yeah, right? I, I believe they originally came. Yeah. What was the the SM the SMP? SMP. The yeah, first... the original Wolverine SMP is the yeah. first cylinder drop in replacement kit I remember. Yeah, and uh, and then afterwards. And then that's when like the the Gen two Polar Stars are coming out, and you know everybody was running those f for like under M four their four sixteens, and there was like a time when it was just like four sixteens had Polar Stars all inside all in them, and then like later on it just started like the, when the solenoids started kicking up, you saw more Infernos, you saw more um, Hydra Gen twos, and because like they're able to like put those into any engine whereas polar stars technology like they were coming out with like the f fusion like the the fusion engine one f1 engine oh was f1 yeah, yeah yeah where it was supposed to be a yeah. solenoid but it got delayed and then but then they came out with a jack it's like what okay <laughs> yeah they, the jack came out of like the jack came field. out of nowhere so which is the other thing. I mean, and I'm sure that all that stuff has sold very well because Polar Star's products, no one's knocking their quality. No. But no. you don't even know when the stuff's coming out. Right. Like, like, were you made aware of the Jack before it came out? Like, I'm sure you were, but you had to, I'm sure, dig <laughs> dig a bit for, you know, for you to find out. It seems kind of ridiculous. Like, it, honestly, yeah, for me, it just... came out of just fucking left field. And I thought I, I knew a lot about Airsoft and, you know, this, the happenings going on. But it just, the Jack was just a fucking surprise for me. Yeah, and the Jack was before I was really following HPA super closely. So it surprised me, too, even though, you know, I do follow the rest of the industry pretty closely. So the Jack then was like, oh, uh, okay, this came out. Cool. 
Um, n- now what? <laughs> but oh, it, it. But the thing is, at the same time, Polar yeah. Star has this what I'm going to call non-communicative strategy, but it still seems to work for them. They still seem to sell a lot of their product. And is their is their brand loyalty just that strong? Is their product really just good enough to carry them by word of mouth? But I'm curious. As the market continues to evolve to cheaper, more readily available options with better brand outreach, I'm wondering when it's not going to be sustainable anymore. I think we are reaching that point where Wolverine is number one and Polar Star will be number two. It's just it, there's so many innovations coming out of fucking like coming out of Wolverine, and it's it's. it's impressive i'm not too surprised you know because they came up with the smp and it took yeah it took uh polar star quite a while to catch up and even it's then, exciting even then they, they're still coming up short i mean they have the, the have you seen the the really tiny regulator they have uh polar star i mean that regulator is fucking cool it, that, it's very impressive i just we don't know yeah. if it works because you know nobody fucking like but oh, the good news we know but that's exists. the thing with polar star is they they release products when they're 100% ready. I mean, right. Polar Star never rushes anything. They're kind of like, uh, you know, Hideo Kojima in his prime. How uh, whenever a new thing comes out, it is 100% ready to fucking go. Um, I mean, and I think that that helps, you know, their branding. Right. But like I said, that the problem is that then when people don't necessarily know when things are coming out, sometimes it's like, well, <laughs> are you going to wait for it? Yeah, I hear you. I, I think Polar Star definitely has the... The cult following, but um, I think they're they're falling behind. They, I, in my opinion, are number two. Polar Star is number two. Wolverine has taken that spot, and that has happened yeah. this year. I don't know if technically they have in terms of market share yet, but I don't think it's far off. And I think, again, just going by you know my opinions, observing this industry, and based on my background. I think they would do well to do just a little bit more communicative, excited outreach. I think that that would help them. And I think that that would be what it would take for them to either take back or maintain the top spot. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I don't know whether or not they're technically behind. Um, Let me ask you a question. I mean, you've been to quite a few national ops. and You've been to maybe one or two Milson West events, maybe three. I'm not exactly sure. But the question I have for you is when's the last time you've seen a, a Polar Star representative or even a tent for Polar Star out at these events. Yeah, and that's that's part of the problem is the last time I saw a Polar Star rep was at Shot Show 2017. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I don't see them at events usually. But who do you always see? You see Wolverine, don't you? Oh yeah, I mean the Wolverine dudes are. Uh, they were at American Mill Sims. Uh, uh, what the heck was it? They were at. Fate of Giant, I remember yeah. that. They yeah, were also they at, uh, they go to all the Third Coast games. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone knows them from there. Um, they, I don't think they technically go to the Milsom West games, but that's because there's not really a vendor area.